Well, anyway, I was up until, I don't know, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, listening to the neighbor yell and scream about how he's God. And then I got woke up this morning around, I don't know, 4.35, the neighbor yelling and screaming he's God. And then... I spent most of the morning listening to him yell and scream, rev his motorcycle, and make threats. Then, I <coughs> had to put up with two guys in a blue uh, crew crab Ford yell at me that it was none of my goddamn business that they were pulling the fence up. Then, I told them that I planted these pine trees right out here. And when I planted those pine trees, Dennis was shooting at me because it's his property, not mine. And they told me that if I had a problem with it, that I had to take it up with Dennis. <clears throat> then, Psycho come back, was yelling and screaming, went over to Peanuts over there and was yelling and screaming over at Peanuts. And now he's down here at the end of the driveway putting in a new pole where he decided he decided that it was. And his whole case is based on that the uh, guy down in Campton on the square who put the pole in the middle of his driveway and on the other side of a single wide up here says that his, po that his property line is now on my side of the tree down here and on the other side on my side of the garage. And I don't know why he gets violent like this, and I don't know why he keeps picking on me, but apparently he's not going to stop. And no matter how many times his cop buddies and his paid off judges yell and scream threats, he's still shooting at me, he's still yelling and screaming he owns my property. And apparently he spent all day yelling and screaming threats at my parents yesterday as well. And here comes Dennis's violent pity party to teach me a lesson about how I need to bow down to him or he's going to blow my fucking brains out. Because that's what Dennis does. He shoots at me, yells he's going to blow my fucking brains out, and laughs how funny it is that everybody bows down to him.
The neighbor's been shooting at me and yelling threats at me and laughing how I bow down to him. Okay. And I'm under court order from Judge Copper that I don't have the legal right to call you guys. Why not? Because I filed a restraining order on him and I don't have the right to file a restraining order on him. So who told, who, why, why was that said? That's what Judge Copper told me. Judge Coppin? Yep. Okay. Just calm down, relax. I'm here now. I'm not upset. He's the one that's upset throwing hissy fit. He spent all day yesterday yelling at my parents on the phone. Okay. All right. So t tell me, just tell me what's happening. Tell me your side. Of the I don't know what's happening. It's spring. I'm trying to tend to my yard. I'm trying to plant uh, pine trees out here. He was shooting at me for planting pine trees out here. He's. They pulled up the fence this morning. They flipped me off and was yelling at me and pulled up the fence this morning. Okay. And he spent all day yesterday yelling at me about, I mean, yelling at my parents about how he owns all the way over to our freaking garage. Over from that corner to over to here? Yeah, he owns all the way over to the, all the way over to the garage, and Dad had to come over. Here. Dad's eight and seventy some odd years old, and Dad had to come over here and put in the poles so that to indicate that that's what it is. Uh, so your dad put. No, my dad didn't put any poles. He's old and he's sick. Okay. So what did your dad do? Nothing. Did your dad have a conversation with him? That he was calling him and harassing him on the phone, and that was as far as it got. Okay. Uh, do you have a... Uh, uh, do you guys have any survey information or anything? The like guy down at the square in Camden, when we bought the property in 85, he put one down there on the driveway, and the other one on the other side of that single wide up there, and then he got in a big fight with us because the property down there was changed and, before we bought ours, and, and there was something about that another place's property was changed, and they got in a big fight with us, and they stormed off. Who, they did? No, the, the guy on the square down there in Camden. Okay. And we bought 100% of that tree right down there, and we bought 100% of the four seeders right down there, and we bought 100% of the chicken house up there. Okay. Okay. Is what we bought. So do you have an abstract? It's, it's all over at the farm with mom and dad. Okay, okay. Well, what I'm going to tell him to do is... And he just pulled up the fence he put in because he was mad at me because I was over there tending to the ditch line that he's got running and tending to the trees and the bushes along the, along his driveway. Okay. And that's how, have you been tending to that before? Yeah, I've, I've been tending all the way over to, and even helping his parents t tend to their property up there. Before he bought this double wide here, I was uh, uh, up tending to the roads up here and, and I searched the property every year to make sure there wasn't any drugs growing on it or anything by the fact that as soon as it was, you guys would be knocking on my door that the fact that you know, it's what it was. So, I mean, it, 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 you know, and it takes 30 minutes out of my time to walk the property and walk back, you know. Right, right, right. I'm with you. I'm with you. And he bought this double wide over here and I, he just started causing trouble and causing more trouble. I couldn't get him off my yard. I uh, started finding them in my house without my permission, and then stuff started coming up missing. I turned them in, and one of his cop buddies started yelling at me that he didn't freaking do it, and and then uh, then he told his mother that he Dennis gave him the pipes that was in part of the stuff that was stolen, and it was the pipes from my ancestors all the way back to the Civil War, and it's just. And I went down, I filed a restrainer order on him in 2013, and the judge went off on me and, and put me in my place and told me I no longer had the right to come to the Camden County office, I no longer had the right to call the police. And, and it was the first time he yelled at me one time about how it wasn't legal for me to go use the, the, the medical facilities down there because of the, there was a bunch of problems down there. They, 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 it was a big nightmare. They, <clears throat> I went in there and uh, I got in a fight with over with mom and dad over them and mom took off in the minivan and drugged me down the road with it and I went down there I went down to the the, the, the lake to the, to the hospital and they uh, what was this? 2012 and the hospital refused to give me any service or anything and then they forced me to sign seven uh, documents when with a, with a guy that was uh, a little taller than you but with a belly with a gun on the side like that but without the stuff on the side uh -huh. standing there yelling at me that I was going to sign it or I was going to go that was it and I fo they forced me to sign seven documents and then I turned them into the state of Missouri and I turned them into Camden County and I got told off do by you, both of do them. Do you have a doctor that you see for any medical issues or anything like I that? I see Smith. Okay. 
there with uh, I got, I'm on antibiotics because I can't seem to bit, beat this rash and stuff, and uh, that's it. Do you do you see any other doctors for anything? Nope. Okay. okay. And back in 2015, I spent 10 days in a mental institution at Cam uh, in in Joplin, and those 10 days they did nothing but yell at me that I was Dennis Tim. Hmm. That's why I'm asking if you if you. If you've seen, do you have any other doctors or no. like that you talked to? No, and uh, back in 2003, I tried to break up with my girlfriend, and the Judge Copper and Dennis's cop buddy put me in a mental institution in St. Louis. And uh, then they had my parents sign the documents saying that they were the one that put me in there two days later, something like that. And because uh, it took them five days for him to even get the paperwork so you to take, me. Have you been taking any kind of medication or anything like that? No, I don't take any medication at all. Okay, so you don't take except any, antibiotics. Okay, you don't take any other no, psychotropic they, meds or anything like that. Nope. Okay. Uh, they got me on some uh, HCIs for sleeping, and that's it. And I have problems sleeping because he's up all hours of the day and night and making loud noises and revving his motorcycle and firing guns off and. When's the last time you fired guns off? Um, I don't know, about a week ago. Um, what is it that you'd like to have done today? I'm not the one who called you. Well, no, I'm. This is a it's situation between both of you, so that's why I'm here talking to you, asking what see what your side of it. What would you like to have done? Him to leave me alone. Okay. So, are you okay with him? doing the thing with his fence or are you no because i don't know what he's doing with this fence okay is he putting is he is he and it was none of my business and i had to take it up with him the man shooting at me for doing yard work okay and this was when he was shooting at you when you were doing yard work oh let's see probably march okay. so but there hasn't been anything like that happening today no, nope, there hasn't been anything like that. Just freaking there, the guy in the blue Ford when they pulled in the first time I was down there watering my bushes down there. Uh -huh. And the driver went like this okay. with imaginary glasses. There was no glasses on his face. Okay. And then they pulled up this way and I was about up here and it looked like the passenger gave me the... Uh... Okay. So what, was you, what, what is it you'd like me to tell them to do for you? I don't know. There, with uh, uh, there, are several freaking. I don't know. You, you have to talk to my family. Okay. Can you give me a phone number or something so I can talk? To you? Uh, they're at uh, Camden, and and I can give you a cell phone, but I don't know. I'm not Camden, but Richland, and uh, I can give you a cell phone number, and you can try. I they're, they're with the, you know, it's a cell phone. Okay. And uh, I can tell them that they're within. You can give me your number, and I can tell them when they get there with whatever and. Okay. Just have him call this number here. Okay. And ha tell and tell my dispatch that they need to speak with me regarding what's what happened out here on JJ. I'll tell my dispatch they're going to be calling me. Okay. Okay. All right. And just have them call me. Okay. And I will right. take care of it from there. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything you else you is there anything that I else I can do for you or anything or? I don't know. I was getting ready to leave. I just locked the door and okay. come out. And he was yelling and screaming, and then he pulled over there when I was carrying my stuff out to the car, and he was yelling over there. And then I went back in to get the rest of my stuff and to brush my teeth. And then I come back out, and he was down there pounding away, putting in a pole for something or something or another. Okay. Okay. Right. And uh, when I saw him down there piling, piling in the pole, I started recording. There was a history of him and what he does. One day he was up there yelling at his brother, and him and his brother got in a fight, and they tried to hit his uh, hit his brother with a shovel, mm -hmm. and he was yelling and screaming, and his brother had to move off the property, and it wasn't no time at all, and they had two officers out here, and they're trying to take his brother into custody and everything else. And soon, there was a long history of him. Says he goes violent, you guys show up, and everybody but him gets punished. That's the history of him. I think his brother, when his brother got arrested, his brother had nothing to do with what was going on out here. I think his brother had warrants. Yeah. Not for something else. I wouldn't doubt it there. with I've had a few conversations with his brother, and his yeah. brother is as violent as him, if not worse. Oh, yeah. And it's just, I'm familiar with him. and uh, there I spent most of the time just kind of doing a cowering the whole time I was talking to him. And luckily his well, daughter was with us and I, the conversation to dollar. I don't want you to feel like that's the case here.
okay? I don't want you to feel like you're a prisoner in your own home and that nobody's here to help oh, it's, you. It's, it's, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it, I feel like that all the time. Well, I don't want you to feel that way. I'm and, going to assure uh, you that's not There's the times case. when it feel, when I swear there's people underneath my house in the crawl space. They're kicking the floors and it sounds like somebody's yelling under there. Okay. And I've tried to just, and, and they, you know, they get all this uh, attitude with me about how I, I'm insane because nobody'd be under my car space. My, my crawl space is almost four foot under there. I mean, right. it, some people can almost stand under there. Right, right. And then, it's just got a couple of hatches, hatches under there. And then if you're walking around the house and you talk by the vents, mm -hmm. it goes in the vents and it goes underneath the, because so, it, it could just as be, easily be somebody outside the house. Sure, absolutely. You know, and, and then they were like, oh, it's the house settling. And it's like, well, there's a difference. I mean, when a house settles, it makes a popping noise. Well, it, it makes- Not a thumping lots, noise. It, well, it makes, <laughs> it depends. They, they, houses, houses settle. They make a lot of different noises. I can tell you right now because I've been I've been in a couple houses that were not even that old houses, and when they were, while we were standing inside this house, right underneath us, there was a big thud. Yeah. We went down into the basement. There was no way we had people outside, people inside, so there was no way anybody could get away. Yeah. Right? So we went downstairs and looked. There wasn't a soul down there, but what it was is there was this big uh, six by six post and there was a pile of uh well they just looked like they just had kind of like poured a pile of concrete out of a bucket kind of made like a little pad with yeah. it and had the six by six stuck in it well that uh, ground that had 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 dried out from being wet yeah so it dropped down and that post went when it dropped it made this big pull on the joist above and it made that whole floor go thud so it was like, what the heck was that? It almost sounded like somebody took the post and hit it, but they didn't. It was when it dropped, everything dropped loose, it all went ba-boom, because there was already a gap. You understand? Yeah. So we stood there and we were all scratching and looking at it, and we finally figured out what it was. But houses will do that for a long time. Yeah. Uh, what happens is the ground underneath there gets wet. Yeah, yeah. And then it completely dries yeah, I, out, and I, everything I, shrinks, and yeah, stuff I re starts. I've reset the, the the underneath the tubs and mm -hmm. and stuff. It bows down right oh, yeah. there real bad, yeah. and I've reset it several times oh, yeah, there. Right. A lot there of with times the, you just got to go by those jacks that you can go down there and this. turn. Because sometimes yeah. you just got to keep doing it. So but, instead of putting a wooden post underneath there, you have to keep putting spacers or whatever in. But seriously, I don't want you to think that there's any issue here, okay? Because there's not. I'm on your side too. And, all right? I mean, and there's a long list. I had a guy guy, guy call me up one time from Kansas City, told me I, he was a federal agent, and that Obama sent him a paper that, that, that I needed to back down and shut up because Dennis was not doing anything at all. And I was like, yeah, whatever, give me your badge number. And then he got all hateful with me because I wouldn't give him a badge number. And then I went I went out to go go and try to file grievances on it because of what Copper done. We don't, and, and, we don't do stuff like that. Yeah, and then uh, real, well, real, real two real Camden real County real. officers pulled in, a woman and a male, and a, and a male or I'd say they're around my age or younger, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they started yelling at me that that was real and, and everything else. And I was just like, you know, mm -hmm. I don't care if it is real. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, your, your you know, you, you know, the, your judge told me I couldn't fi file with the Camden County office. What am I supposed to do? <coughs> well, you can. If there's an issue, you need to let us know. Uh, and uh, I, you know, and I've had some serious problems with Copper before, uh, Copper, Copper, or whatever, whatever you say his name, before, and uh, and it does no good whatsoever to hire an attorney. And that incident with judge the Coppin. Yep. And that's that incident with the restraining order. I called every attorney in the book from Miller. County County to Can Laclede County, Canada Davis, County, he's a judge. <laughs> it's hard to Pulaski help. County. I called every little attorney and every book I could. I even called some up in Marshfield, and none of them <laughs> would help me for less than twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, well, and, attorneys want money. And and, and the exact and this is what upset me. And I told told him this. This is what upset me. They said they wanted twelve hundred dollars to file the paperwork on, uh, on the restraining order. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's free to file the paperwork on the restraining order. And it's illegal for an attorney to go into the courthouse and file the paperwork without me. Well, he can. And he wanted $1,200 to can. file the representing paperwork. representing you, they can, but restraining order paperwork, you can go in and file. I know. And and it made me feel not only... Restraining order doesn't become restraining order until there's a hearing. And 
it made me feel like that I was paying them twelve hundred dollars to go fill out the paperwork and then they were done. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly how it made me feel. It sounds like an attorney was taking advantage. Yes, that's here. you go you go do what you need to go do. Don't worry about this. I'll go down here and talk to him. <laughs> if the property line is a different property line, then that's something you guys are gonna have to get uh, settled in civil litigation. I can't do anything about yeah. that. Okay. There with uh, we, I've tried to have that discussion with mom and dad too. And, so, and anyway, uh, let me go talk to him. What's him. with the white light right here? Does it flash? Yes. Yeah. All right. It's, it's not white. Is there though. any regulation on that? Because I'm getting ready. I'm trying to put a light bar on here, and I know with the colors and stuff, they're all white. Yeah. Well, no. And these, I got a set of those, and I've been thinking about putting them on here like these, that. These actually ain't white. Do they not. Look like they're white. No. All right. The, the one side's red, and one side's blue. Okay. The same with. See if you look at my light bar too. If you look at my light bar, it's all LEDs. Yeah. So it looks like it's all it's all just white, but it's not. All right. Yeah. Because right, I, I got a set like that, and I've been thinking about putting. Oh yeah, them. we've got there's little LEDs all over the place. So when the truck, so when the vehicle's setting on the from the side, you can still see side marker lights or some in the back too. Okay. The back well, the reason why I was asking was because I got them. I've been thinking about putting them on the thing here so that they can light up so I can see like in the brush yeah. to the sides. Yeah. If you're, if they're, if, uh, if you're using them for off-road use, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. And, and I know because there's a bunch of laws uh, there with the, the glow lights under the truck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you can't have them on there or be using Why them. them? Why uh, the vehicles uh, in transit. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can't use them in like parking lots and stuff like that unless you're at a show or yeah, something yes, because it's because it's, like it's distracting to the other drivers. And, and people can think that it's uh, an emergency situation yeah, there's or there's a problem yeah. and and there's a whole bunch of stuff like that with lights on the vehicle and I've been I know I can put one up there and I know I can put them down here what's your, what's your name by the way forward. because we never even introduced each other uh, Kirby Kirby I'm George Bellich and uh, Wagner this is you know there with the, the property and okay. we own this spot You're Kirby Wagner yeah okay. we own this spot and we own 220 acres over on Shady uh -huh. and then we own that uh, rock building up in town and then we own uh, some property down by the lake too okay all right and uh well with, talk to uh, your folks t talk to your folks have them get in contact with me and we'll see if we can't get this worked out okay all right. i'm gonna go talk to him all right just just relax we'll get her we'll get her out all right all right all right i'm the community resource area that works in Stoutland area all right